In this video, we discuss learning outcome number four, which is all about different types of observational studies. Now remember, observation, observational studies are studies in which researchers are observing and measuring variables, but they're not applying treatments to everyone. That's not to say that there aren't different categories, like we might look at left-handed people versus right-handed people, um, people who have had heart attacks versus people that have not had heart attacks, people that have been through a tsunami versus people that have not been through a tsunami. But we're not going to force anybody to be left-handed or force anyone to be right-handed. We're not going to force some people to go through a tsunami and others not to. Um, we're not going to force some people to have some um, debilitating um, health issue and then uh, force other people not to. Um, in those cases, um, it well, it wouldn't be ethical or it wouldn't make sense to apply treatments, but we might be interested in the differences between those two groups and how those two variables are related to some other variable. Um, so those are all um, categories that might be um, appropriate or that you might see in an observational study. So remember, in observational studies, there's no treatment being applied. The doctors or the researchers um, the people who designed the experiment are not giving the subjects anything, but they are still observing the subjects and measuring, the, um, measuring different qualities related to the experiment. So we've got three types of observational studies, and they're all related to when that data is collected. The first type is called a cross-sectional study. In a cross-sectional study, data are observed, measured, and collected at one point in time, not over a period of time. So most surveys are cross-sectional studies because you give the survey once and everybody gets it at the same time and then you get that data back and then you might look at differences between different people um, and their answers to that survey or you might just summarize the results of the, the survey in general, but all the data are collected at one point in time, so that's cross-sectional. We also have what are called retrospective studies. In this case, data are observed um, and collected from the past. And whenever I hear retrospective, I think retro, and I think that's associated with past, the past. Um, so data are collected from a past time period, going back in time. And you might think, how on earth do you go back in time? Um, but we are able to go back in time by uh, reviewing old medical records, reviewing old interviews, um, reviewing um, old uh, maybe like traffic data, all kinds of things um, that we have records for, um, that we might have access to, um, might be used in a retrospective or case control study. And lastly, we've got prospective studies, or call, they're also called longitudinal studies. I, always, I was always taught longitudinal. Um, they're also called uh, cohort studies. So if cross-sectional studies are about one point in time and retrospe retrospective studies are about data collected from the past, prospective studies are about data collected from the future. Um, and again, we're not time travelers. Basically what we're doing is we're selecting a group of subjects or we're focusing on um, like some experimental units, and then we're seeing how those experimental units evolve over time. And often those experimental units are initially um, put into cohorts, and then we're looking at how that cohort changes over time and how it, how it compares to possibly other cohorts. Um, so data are collected in the future from groups that are sharing common factors, and those groups are called cohorts. I wanted to give you an example um, so I made up some hypothetical examples, but they're, they're based on reading I used to do. I was really interested in the effects of divorce on children for a very long time. I still am. Um, I still care very much about um, how family dynamics affect children. Um, and so my reading um, influenced the next slide a lot. So let's say we've got three hypothetical examples um, of studies related to the effects of divorce on children. Now we're not going to force some kids to have divorced parents and some kids to not have divorced parents and then look at uh, the results. We wouldn't do an experiment with this, but we might observe children of divorce and observe children from that were born at the same time 
and see how their childhood affects them into the future. Um, and of course, we'd need a, a control group. We'd need to compare um, children with divorced parents to children without divorced parents from the same um, age group. So here is how um, those three types of observational studies would play out in hypothetical, um, but based in reality, based in readings that I've done, um, studies on the effects of divorce on children. So in a cross-sectional study and the effects of divorce on children, you might say there are different effects of divorce on children depending on the child's age. So what we would typically see is we'd see children with and without divorced parents from several age groups, and they're all interviewed at the same time. So you might have a group of five to seven year olds and then seven to 10 year olds and then 11 to 13 year olds and then 14 to 16 year olds. And you would interview each of those groups at the same time and you would think of the themes that came out of those interviews as representing the children in that age group. So all of them are interviewed during a certain time period. That's what makes it a cross-sectional study. But one of the things that you would be finding out that would be you know, particularly interesting is how divorce affected um, the older kids versus how divorce affected the younger kids in 1990 or something like that. Now, the problem with this type of study with the effects of divorce on children, well, I'm sure you guys can think of lots of problems with it, is that it might be representative of the fact that all of these kids um, were um, interviewed in 1990, it might have something to do um, with the year that they were, um, the years that they were raised. And it might be different, we might have different results if we did a cross-sectional study 10 years later or 15 years later or 20 years later. Um, so maybe that study wouldn't be generalizable. Um, but the benefit of doing cross-sectional study is that you're able to get data right now and able to say something and compare these groups right now. <clears throat> so we would have children with and without divorced parents so that we have not a control group and a treatment group, but we have a control group and a, a group with divorced parents so that we can see the difference between those two. And they're all interviewed at the same time and then grouped by age. So that's how we might do a cross-sectional study on the effects of divorce on children. And what about a retrospective or case control study? Can you imagine how we would do that? Excuse me. Okay, that was your chance to think about it. Um, this, was, this was how I thought of it. I said, well, if I was doing a retrospective or case control study on the effects of divorce on children, um, I, would, I can imagine this happening with a, a researcher, um, or excuse me, not a researcher, a family therapist or somebody who is like a child therapist, uh, analyzing interviews of past patients. And that therapist could inter or analyze interviews of past patients and compare themes in the interviews with children of divorce, um, uh, between children of divorce and children with married parents, and you could look at children in the same age range. So you could compare, you know, the seven to 10 year olds um, whose parents were divorced with the seven to 10 year olds whose parents were not divorced. Um, you could compare, you know, uh, the other ages as well by looking at interviews from the past. Um, the, one of the downsides to this might be that all of those kids grew up in different um, time periods. So the seven to 10 year olds who were seven to 10 years old from uh, 1987 to 1990 might be different from the seven to 10 year olds that were um, seven to 10, you know, three years earlier, or three years later, or 10 years earlier, or 10 years later. Um, it really would uh, maybe perhaps not be generalizable, and you'd have to take that into consideration when you look at that data, but if, or when you look at that analysis, but it would be a retrospective study because they'd be looking at past interviews, um, interviews of past patients, and then analyzing the relationship between this um, variable of having divorced parents and not having divorced parents and different, um, different measures of functioning. So we've got a cross-sectional study, all the cohorts or all of the groups, excuse me, um, all the different age groups are being interviewed at the same time. And as they're interviewed at the same time, 
that each age group is analyzed and we have some sense of how that age group is responding to divorce. Or we could do a retrospective study and also split it up by age group. Um, but we would be looking at past interviews. If we wanted to do a prospective study, could you imagine how it was done? Can you think about what a longitudinal study of the effects of divorce on children would look like? I actually read a book about this. It was a very controversial book. <coughs> and I read another book about a, a cross-sectional study on the effects of divorce on children. And so that's where I got this, these examples from, or they, I was inspired by those books to get this example. Can you think of how we would do a prospective or longitudinal study? Okay, so here's my answer. Of course, you can come up with your own answer and it could very well be correct as well. There are lots of different ways that we could do this. Um, but one way that we could have a longitudinal study of the effects of divorce on children was to put children in different cohorts. So you've got children in a certain age group and children in a certain age group and a ch children in a certain age group in a particular year. And then you could follow all of those age groups every six years over a period of 30 years or 50 years or something like that to see how their perception of their parents' divorce or their childhood affects them at different points in their lives as they go back and reflect on the way they were raised and how it's affecting their relationships or they go back and they reflect on the way um, they were raised and how it's affecting their careers or other aspects of their life um, we could we could see and we could also see how that within that cohort how that cohort changes over time so how did the seven to ten year olds of the past like evolve 30 years later? And how did the, the uh, 11 to 14 year olds of the past um, evolve over 30 years? Um, so we would start with children in these cohorts at the very beginning, and then we would let that go forward and let that go forward and let that go forward. And that this could be very interesting um, and insightful, um, but it's very expensive. And then you have um, all of the complications of self-report data um, that you're going to have in the retrospective study as well. Well, you'd have that problem with, with all three of these types of studies. Um, but we're looking at qualitative data here. Um, it would be a lot of interviews and analysis of themes within interviews. So cross-sectional studies um, are dealing with data collected at one point in time. Retrospective studies deal with data from the past usually from old records of some kind, and prospective study studies look at data going forward, like looking at that cohort of children every six years right now, and then six years from now, and six years from then, and six more years later, and six more years later, for however long, 30 years, 50 years, something like that. Okay, so those are um, examples uh, for the effects of divorce on children. Let's look at some more general examples. This is your opportunity to practice. I would like you to look at all three of these examples, read it carefully, and decide whether each of these observational studies is cross-sectional, retrospective, or prospective. If you want, you're welcome to uh, <coughs> uh, stop the video here and just answer this for yourself and then you can start watching the video again and I'll give you the answers. Okay, so let's look at the first one. It says phase two of the nurse's health study was started in 1989 with one, or 116,000 female registered nurses and the study is ongoing. Okay, if the study is ongoing and it started in 1989, well, that's not happening at one point in time we're not going back in the past, even though it started in 1989. If it's still going, it started at one point and it goes forward, that's prospective or longitudinal. We can think of it as a cohort study. Okay, let's look at the second example. In the second example, we're told that researchers from the National Institutes of Health want to determine the current rates of marijuana consumption among adults living in states that have legalized the use of marijuana. They conduct a survey of 500 adults in those states. They just interview everybody or survey everybody and that's in those states right now. Well, since they're surveying everyone at the same time, that's cross-sectional. 
So you might say, how did people in the state fare? How did people in the state fare? How did people in the state fare? But they were all interviewed, or excuse me, surveyed at the same time. In this last example, we uh, see that samples of subjects with and without heart disease were selected. Okay, and then research, researchers looked back to determine whether the subjects had taken aspirin on a regular basis. Now, I feel like this problem is a little bit contrived. It came from our textbook, but since it says that the researchers are looking back to determine whether the subjects have taken aspirin on a regular basis, since they're looking back, that would be retrospective. Um, I'm not really sure how the researchers would look back. I don't know that anyone would have records of how often or if, if we could be sure to have subjects that had records of how often they had taken aspirin. We'd have to interview them and then it would feel more cross-sectional. But since we are looking back and we're thinking of this as researchers looking in the past and seeing the people with heart disease and the people without heart disease, did you take aspirin on a regular basis or not? Since they're looking back, it's retrospective. So those are our three types of observational studies. There's cross-sectional, data are collected at one moment in time. Retrospective, so that's data collected from the past, usually from records. And prospective or longitudinal, that's when we have a cohort or three or five, and we look at how those co cohorts um, change and evolve over time. So we, we're collecting data now, but then also collecting data as we go into the future. That's prospective. 